Hello, my needle drops. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd, and uh, it's time for a review of the new Pharaoh Monch record, PTSD. This guy is a Queens rapper back in the 90s, along with fellow MC Prince Poe, dropped a few classics like their self-titled record and the album Stress under the name Organized Confusion. If you want to hear some really savage and enlightening conscious hip-hop and boom bap, check out that Stress record. Back in the day, Organized Confusion had a sound that wasn't too unlike a lot of other acts in hip-hop in their area around that time, like Wu-Tang or KRS-One or Black Moon. But the technical aspects of their rapping, especially Mancha's rapping, as well as some of their weird and progressive song topics and instrumentals, and their speedy flows as well, just kind of set them apart from a lot of the other artists who came out of that landscape. Take the song Releasing Hypnotical Gases, for example, from their debut record. Sonically and lyrically, I mean, <laughs> this is a pretty insane progressive track. This is some weird stuff for New York boom bap in the 90s. So these guys were definitely experimental for their time and, and went on through their lyrics to influence guys like Eminem as well as Aesop Rock. If you're the kind of hip hop fan who is big into lyrical concepts, Monch should be on your radar. Organized Confusion should be on your radar. You should go to your record collection and already see these records sitting in there. Oh, are they in there? Well, I mean, not in mine, but you know. I wish they were there. And this progressive, experimental, and very lyrical character trait is something that Monch went on to hone in his solo career when he started that in the late 90s. And even though the record he kicked things off with, Internal Affairs, in 1997 was a great record, uh, his, his solo output has been kind of spotty at best, especially when it comes to the gap of time in between each record. I mean, he followed up Internal Affairs almost 10 years later with Desire and then four years after that came the record War. And now, with just a few years in between War and this new record, we have PTSD. And I'm guessing from the acronym album title and the sort of similarly corny cover art, as well as the continuing War theme in the album title itself, that Monch is kind of in the same creative mindset that he was on War, attacking a lot of the same lyrical topics like war, like oppression. But with this new Monch record, I think a few more ideas get thrown into the mix. I think a lot of the strife on this record is more personal, specifically dealing with suicidal thoughts, depression, mental illness. There's a lot of demons being fought on this record. When it comes to the personal emotions delivered on these songs, I think PTSD has more punch. I think instrumentally it has a little more punch too, and I think Monch comes through with more energy and more aggression. When it comes to the instrumentals on this record, there's nothing really all that trendy or modern or flashy on this thing. For the most part, Monch stays in his sonic comfort zone. There's a lot of boom bat beats on this thing that wouldn't sound too uncomfortable on Monch's previous three records or any number of hip hop records that came out of New York in the 2000s. Like with the songs Rapid Eye Movement or The Jungle or Bad MF, we have a lot of strong crispy snares and thudding kick drums backed by horns and guitars, strings. These actually come through on the song Losing My Mind, which has a pretty nice vocal guest on the track, Denown, who actually sings really well over this chorus. There's just something about this song that reminds me of a track or two from like the two most recent Roots records. Anyway, it's a very sad, very somber song. And then there's the track Dream, which has one of the most upbeat instrumentals on the entire LP. Really jumpy, uppity horns just popping in and out all over this thing. So really just some very sweet, smile-inducing soul vocal sampling. And then there's the song Scream, which I do enjoy to a, a very slight degree because of its really unorthodox instrumental, some really weird guitars playing all throughout this thing. It's one of the noisiest beats on this record. But Monch does some really campy, weird-ass singing on the hook on this thing. He's singing along with this guitar lead that he doesn't totally line up with when he is singing. Uh, it's, it's sort of sloppy in an intentional way, but it doesn't really come off sounding that good. Especially as he's saying, sometimes this world makes me feel like I need to 
<laughs> the, the track is just super shoddy. And then there's tracks that, that really try very hard to set a very sad tearjerker tone, like Broken Again, which has this really weird skipping bass line that does not link up with the drums as well as it should, and really kicks the momentum, kicks the groove of the beat off balance. Not really seeing the, uh, the the appeal of this particular instrumental. And then Monch puts himself on top of this really weird Hendrix-like pedestal on the heroin addict interlude as he is rapping and speaking and, and singing and yelling over this acid-soaked guitar riff and these very hard-hitting beats. It's got a really strong 60s psychedelic rock influence to it, and this psychedelic rock and pop sound continues on tracks here like The Closer, The Grand Illusion, where the Step Kids actually come through and help the instrumental out with some really colorful synths, some very eerie, chilly, sung, harmonized vocals and nizzles and nizzles and nizzles. Maybe not the kind of sound that I necessarily want to hear backing a Monch record, but still, it's it's one of the better of the unconventional ideas that this record has to offer. PTSD is far from a perfect album, however, the instrumentals are rarely the staple of a Monch record. And even if I don't really like a beat or I don't like a hook on this LP, it, 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 it rarely stands in the way of me enjoying what Monch is doing lyrically. Like I said, on this LP, I think Monch is showing more energy, more creativity, more eccentricity, more just crazy ideas. The levels of wordplay that his lines work on are fantastic. Sometimes working on two or three or four different visual or lyrical images and references at one time. And when Monch isn't doing that, he is occasionally delivering these tongue twisters of alliteration or internal rhymes within a bar that I couldn't even begin to start reciting. Like on the track Time 2 where Monch says that the streets are painted in gold but that fades because it's painted in henna and the side of the grass that's greener, it's greener unless it's a sua, get, 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 get it sua side instead of the side of the grass, or jenna side. And on this same track there's a verse where Monch is literally stuttering through his lines as if he is a, a soldier or a veteran that is suffering from PTSD. There's also the track Losing My Mind where he uh, poses this really morbid, morbid piece of imagery with babies insides being outside, outside of a house of God. That's ungodly. This inside, outside, inside, outside switch up against one another a few times. And then there's a line where he's referencing Dick Cheney and George Bush and Colin Powell, all talking about Colin, Dick, and Bush as three separate things, but bringing them together in a very clear shot at their administration. And then there's the song Damage, which I think has one of the most hilarious pieces of wordplay <laughs> I've heard this year, kicking off the track with this line about how rappers waving guns or llamas in front of the camera, that's just drama, it's llama drama. And when those cameras are attached to dollies, he calls those guns Dalai Lamas, since they're just being waved for the cameras. There's the track Rapid Eye Movement on this thing with Black Thought, where uh, Monch delivers some really corny, cartoony, ultra-violent, very relentless lyrics. I mean, going to the point where he says that he grows five times his size and grabs mace by his thigh and then whacks someone with mace. It's uh, it's it's pretty over the top, but still funny and one of the better tracks on the LP. Black Thought really lives up to the bar, the in-your-face aggressive and sort of braggadocious bar that Monch sets on this track with, with very little problem. And then there's a quartet of tracks toward the end of this LP that focus a little more on concept and theme than they do raw and really dizzying lyrics. Like the song The Jungle, where Monch is essentially rapping about urban enlightenment, trying to turn people who are struggling through life in the city onto some alternative ideas. And of course, there are a plethora of jungle metaphors throughout this track, too. And then there's the song Broken Again, where Monch essentially gives us a, a first-person view of the suffering and the bliss that comes along with uh, th this heroin addiction that he's on about on this track. And he uh, uses a uh, I see seed everyone to sort of let everybody know or let everybody in on this whole heroin thing line that actually reminds me of a C seed line that Andre 3000 used uh, on a track with UGK. There's the title track of this thing where Monch is essentially dealing with 
some suicidal thoughts. And the song Dream, where Monch is referencing Wu-Tang in a big way, especially ODB with the uh, place to burn <laughs> line on this track. And, uh, you know, uh, this record is so dark at a lot of points. It's so sad at a lot of points. And even though this song is kind of corny, it's a little too cutesy for its own good, it, it really is the, the bright, shining moment this record needed to kind of pick things up a little bit, especially with Talib Kweli's verse toward the end of this track. It's really one of the better verses on this entire LP, and I think it's freaking hilarious, especially the moment where he's rapping about stopping smoking altogether, and then he found that as soon as he stopped and gave it some time, uh, he started to dream again, and the list of things that he says he started to dream about uh, completely ridiculous. You know, even though there's a lot to like about this album, and I love a, a good deal of the tracks on this thing, there are some glaring flaws here as well that are just kinda huge turnoffs. For one, the hook. I, I know I'm a stickler for hooks sometimes, but I feel like in this case it's, it's kinda justified. The worst thing that the hooks on this record do at times is just deliver bad singing. I mean, either it's off pitch or it's just delivered in a really boring way to the point where the hook is just uh, just uh, really inconsequential to the, the, the song's quality. It just doesn't add that much to the track. The title track on here, Scream, Broken, and sadly enough, even the track where the step kids are on, uh, the closing track on here, you know, they're really eerie, chilly vocals, while they sound fine, the, the really obvious rhyme scheme that, that goes into the lyrics that they're singing just does not go over too well. And then there's Bad Motherfucker, which, I mean, I, I gotta call foul on this hook, you know? I'm a bad motherfucker, man! And the pussy pop line, it's it just, uh, no. Despite Monch saying that every verse is a virtue on this track, uh, th this track has some of the weakest verses on the entire LP, and obviously every hook is not a virtue. And finally, the skits on this record leave leave a lot to be desired. Either they are not funny, though I do sort of see the concept, sort of like when Monch is talking about the side effects of medication that one may have to take or that one is prescribed. And then there are these sort of weird computer voice sketches where Monch is sort of being talked to by this woman robot voice telling him that he's at this memory facility and so on and so forth. It just sounds really low budget and, and does very little to sort of set a scene like I know these sketches are trying to do. Overall, this is a very good listen for Monch. He brings lyrical fire for the most part on these tracks. I think his ambitions are higher than they were on his last record. I think his lyrical concepts are better, but there are a few lyrical potholes here and there like eating a bag of baby dicks, half-baked hooks, a few underwhelming instrumental choices, but still some of the better hip-hop tracks that you can hear this year. This record does start off strong, it does deliver highlights throughout, but it does become a little hit or miss as you travel through. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. Transition, if you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Vero Monch, forever.